And welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I am your host, AJ. And I am your co-host, Dominique. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah, it is nighttime right now. Quite a bit sheepy. And this is podcast number 10. Number and, 10. And the title of today's podcast is Do Opposites Attract? How different is too different? Hmm. Now, we must start where we left off last week. And we have to pick up with, obviously, as usual, AJ could not answer the question. What question? Uh-huh. You don't even remember, <laughs> do you? <laughs> it was so, something about you saying no, 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 that no. you... I'm going to read it off to you. I wanted to... Just to reiterate, uh, but I... the question was, what's an area about me mm -hmm. that you like to learn more about mm -hmm. or have questions around? Hmm. We've got a long podcast in front of us, so I need you to pep the step. You had all week to think you about cannot this. I didn't because I you, forgot you know, about the question. That's really sad. And then you sprung it on me again. Listen. So all you did was just reloop the same thing. The point I'm trying to make is in a minute we're going to be mean, like. I mean, honestly. When as, I have a whole podcast, a place, it's going to be like, this is the AJ answering questions. He's never answered a question in 20 weeks. <laughs> i know <laughs> look i think my wife is perfect and i just feel like i that wasn't the question i know but i know says, so much about you, you like no i feel about. like i know so much about you and i'm like you know i don't know i mean i i i t for 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 me to explore more mm -hmm. in an area of you but when we talk, when we talk about area. What what do what do you mean? Like I don't know. Like exactly. You see my point? <laughs> oh my exactly. God. Listen, we're not going to spend the first ten minutes of this podcast clarifying. No, the no, question. no. We can go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, it's. <sighs> he can't answer the question. Let's move on, people. Na, 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 na. So, all right, now. We're going to go ahead and get into the articles from psychologytoday.com. And we've all heard how opposites attract, but we're also told that birds of a feather flock together. Most research indicate that we do prefer to affiliate with others who are similar to us, who share our values and interests. One, two, three. But some claim that when it comes to the personality traits, we may be most interested in complementary. This means that for some traits, similarity is most desirable, but for others, we prefer somehow who is our opposite. So what are your thoughts on like opposites attracting? Uh, I don't know how much I believe in that. But it is not something that ever crossed my mind like that either. I think, I think, I I I personally feel like, um, those who are balanced in a certain area counters the other one. Mm -hmm. So like, or 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 put it this way: if you're imbalanced in one area, the other person is balanced in another area. It helps each other. So it's not about just necessarily being attracted to. It's just about what fits the slot. You like know, like the keyhole mm -hmm. you know what i mean is that is that gonna fit this door that i need you know what i mean like um learning about self-love and and caring about myself and things like that is something that was like literally nothing i would ever think about mm -hmm. but that's something that you know a lot about and you taught me and you're teaching me still mm -hmm. about it so that really fits the mold but it's not something that you're like Oh, I'm just attracted to someone who da 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 da. It's nothing like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what's funny? So I feel like it's the you're attracted to you can the the idea that you can help me work on something that I need to work on if you allow it. Yes. Right. I mean, you know how you well yeah. there are some subject matters that. Like, you know, we, we pick a subject at random at the end of each episode. Mm -hmm. And what is cool, just because we just like to learn and know about things, is not every topic is a topic we necessarily resonate with. 
So like, for example, this is a topic I don't necessarily resonate with. However, mm-hmm. when I'm deep diving and I'm you know looking through articles and things like that, mm-hmm. I have a ton of information that I thought was useful. So I feel like this is one of those podcasts where we're going to learn as we go. But just walking into it, I really don't have really an opinion about it. So I think I'm mm-hmm. really going to be taking in the information with everyone else. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So that's kind of like my take on it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't be good if there was something that we didn't disagree with. Mm -hmm. I feel like there should be things that we disagree with too. And I just, I just feel like an opposite really is helpful. Mm -hmm. And, but I also feel like there's things too that you should have in common because if you do not, then it would be so like far off and you will be misunderstood by your partner. Right. In a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like some, uh, you know, like music, I mean, for, for example, is a, is a good one. Mm-hmm. Being creative is a good one. Mm-hmm. What we like in terms of shows, TV, blah, blah, blah. Like those relationships to me that be like, you know, they don't have nothing in common. They don't like nothing. They don't do nothing together. They have no- it's like, what is it? Mm-hmm. What what, what y'all do? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, she liked them shows. I like these shows. Yeah, I like to eat this. She liked to eat that. Yeah, I like to do this. So it's like y'all are basically never going to connect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I feel like there's a balance with it. That's all. I agree. So from this same article, the two, the t- if I can even read it, 930 at night. The type of complimentary that has received the most attention from researchers. Uh, What the hell was that? My clipboard kind of messed up. (laughs) Start that over. That boy's strong. See, (laughs) The type of complimentary (laughs) that has received the most attention from researchers examines two traits. Mm -hmm. Affiliation, Mm -hmm. which is warm and friendly versus cold and hostile. Warm and cuddly. And control dominant versus submissive Mm -mm. according to this theory we prefer someone who is similar to us on affiliation which is Mm -hmm. warm people like warm people and cold people like Mm -hmm. other cold people okay and opposite on dominance dominant Uh. people pair off with submissive people on the other hand we might expect that everyone regardless of their own personality would prefer positive traits in others, for example, even cold people should still prefer to be with someone who's warm. So are they saying dominant people prefer to have submissive people? Absolutely. Oh. Why okay. do you think you're here? <laughs> I had to laugh like real, real hard on that one. We, we all know what's going on. I No, I disagree with that. That's why I said that. I mean, I don't, I don't fully disagree with it. What I mean is I feel like. A dominant person loves a dominant person who can be tamed. I think that's what? yes. It's, it it look, just sound like buffoonery. No, no, no. Because Who's I think being tamed. It's not about necessarily just being tamed. I just use that word. But what I'm saying is, a dominant person likes another dominant person because a dominant person is unattractive to someone who is so passive and submissive and just extra. Do you think you're dominant? That's that's really, really extra. I think that we're both dominant. And that's why sometimes we'll have intense arguments, but we also will have intense connection. So I think that that really has a lot to do with it. At least it's okay. She, Our daughter needs water, so the door shall squeak. <laughs> I don't think that was Ellie. I think that was Lacey. It was. She texted me. Oh, Lacey texted you? No. Oh. The dog did not text me. <laughs> like, uh, really? Our child texted me and said, can I go get water? Uh, Lacey and was I like, said, yes, you can. <laughs> rough, rough. Rough, rough, rough. No. Okay. I'm about to squeak this dough. All right. But the second article comes from betterhelp.com. Okay. In the 1950s, a sociologist by the name of Robert Francis went Robert Francis Winch. Winch. <laughs> Robert Francis Winch. I'm like, I'm like, witch led, but no way, no, no. This is just funny. All right. But um, okay, he led a study to make selection 
to answer the question, do opposites attract? During his investigation, Winch interviewed married couples and examined their relationship as well as their personalities and needs. Based on his research findings, Winch argued that to make a marriage work, aspects of one's personality, especially socially related traits like aggressiveness and assertiveness, should complement each other. For example, a husband who is outgoing would be content with a wife who is more introverted. Wench's research suggests that it's not that opposite track, but traits are complementary. Hmm. I mean, that's weird. I think that for someone to be outgoing and then want to be with someone who's not, obviously that's their way of saying, some people don't like the idea of their spouse also being their friend. So in a lot of cases, they are not interested in spending all their time with that person. They want separation. So th they don't want to have the same interests. And I'll be honest, like me and you, we have 85% the same interests. But mm -hmm. I do enjoy the 15, 20% here and there where I'm doing my thing and you doing yours. Mm -hmm. That's why like, you, you know, you play video games. I have zero interest in playing video games. I'll watch them, but I like that you can go game and I can watch my little goofy ass shows when I want to. And we just have, that's when you, you need that for your mental health. You know what I'm saying? So I think that to want someone who is completely opposite of you is strange. Cause it's almost like saying you don't want like when your kids grow up and they leave the nest, you want to just be sitting across this room like we don't even like the same shit. That's weird. It is. You know. That's what I was. That's what I was that's saying. That's why a lot like, of people wait till their kids are, they, are gone and then they end do? up divorced because yeah. they have nothing in common. And you know, and it's like not to be weird or anything, but when you're like talking to a couple and they literally have nothing in common, you question that in your mind. And I'm not probably the only one. I'm probably not alone with that. Mm -hmm. Like you'll be like, but they don't, they like literally don't like nothing, nothing together. So what is it that connects them? Yeah. Maybe that's a question for a couple who, you know. Are complete opposites. Right. I, yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, a 2007 study by Marky and Marky found that husbands who are aloof or standoffish are less satisfied with their marriages when their wives are also cold. These men prefer their partners to be warm on the affiliation scale. Wives who were on the colder end of the affiliation scale preferred warm partners. In this way, opposites do appeal to one another. Mm -hmm. But do opposites attract in other areas of personality? Surprisingly, the findings were the same for dominant and submissive. Mm -hmm. The Marquis result indicated that submissive wives were happier when they had husbands who were also submissive. This pattern continued through the rest of the research. Ongoing partners prefer ongoing partners. Affiliates, I mean, affectionate partners appreciate the desire for affection and so on and so forth. So this study is basically saying that dominant people like dominant people, submissive people like submissive people. That's what I just said. So on and so on. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, that is what you said. Makes sense. I think it makes sense, you know, because honestly, I think it's, 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 it's a, it's a turnoff sometimes when you have someone who is overly the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's a turnoff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. Because you just kind of disconnect. All right. So we do have one more article on this matter. And this article also comes from psychologytoday.com. Okay. So consider the possibility that those differences that can seem so problematic may actually be the very thing that adds spice and passion to your relationship, particularly in, if I can speak, sorry, particularly in the sexual aspect. I think I'm having trouble talking because I know Ellie might be able to hear us. <laughs> it's like, we're going to cut to an early break <laughs> after these messages. <laughs> Pull the door. As I was saying, we are drawn to others out of the need and desires that are unfulfilled in our lives, such as a desire to experience greater connection, security, love, support, and comfort. On the other hand, some of those unfulfilled longings have to do with their polar opposites, such as adventure, 
freedom, risk, challenge, and intensity. While these needs and desires may appear to be mutually exclusive, they not only can coexist with each other, but in the process generate a tension of the opposites that produces the passion that sustains, deepens, and enlivens relationships. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> um. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't know if I understand what I just read. <laughs> so. Uh... No, pause, pause. <laughs> what I will say is. I don't get it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Back where we started. <laughs> no thoughts on no, that one. Um, I mean, I understand the the tension of opposites. So, from mm -hmm. my from what I am assuming that this means is basically like, and this is something that you don't do, and I tell you that I wish you did do. What? There's this thing you see it in a lot of movies and things like that, where it's like you have a boy meets girl. Mm -hmm. Girl is into something. Mm -hmm. Boy has no clue about it, has never had a desire to do it, but he goes out of his way to almost like muster up a desire to do it. Mm -hmm. And then even though he may look silly, even though whatever, whatever, there is a passion that comes out of that because she can see that he's putting himself in an uncomfortable position just to connect with her. And so I think that that is where this is coming from is when, I know for women in particular, when men put themselves in uncomfortable positions, that's kind of like the ultimate way of showing love. So you want me to uh, do happy planner stickers with you? No, <laughs> I've already, you already know the things that mean the most to me Then we don't need to go down that road. But the thing about it is those are the things that matter the most. It doesn't matter to me when you do something that's easy for you. That means nothing to me. Even if I asked you to do it, it, if in terms of when we were talking, what what was that two weeks ago on the, in the eighty eighty marriage when we were talking about um, the net worth of your relationship and how when you do big things that's big money in your savings account, little things little money in your savings account, whether it's positive or negative, whether you're adding to it or deducting from it. So it's like for me in particular when the the higher your uncomfortability in doing something that you think that'll just make me happy the more money in the savings account but if you're doing something that really doesn't make you uncomfortable it, it, it's pennies on the dollar kind of thing i you know i feel like sometimes you you feel as though that i can do so many things that you don't know how uncomfortable or how like new and 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 so much i don't know about something is to me i think you'd be like well you do everything so everything i do it just seems like oh it's just easy for you it's no. just easy for you it's just easy. no i mean sometimes i, I just Listen, i feel that way here's an example but, if i say can you take my clothes out of the washer and put them in the dryer for me real quick that's easy for you right if I ask something else of you that I know makes you uncomfortable or puts you in a position to feel extremely vulnerable, I, after 10 plus, almost 11 years of marriage, I know what that stuff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I can already tell you. But not necessarily because look. You was like, uh, go fix the washing machine. <laughs> no, no, you, no, no, no. This, this, is, this, this isn't I mean, about uh, physical effort. No, I get it. I this get it. It's not get about it. physical effort. I, I get it. I get it. It's about vo the, the moment. There are certain things that to you on the vulnerability scale is super high that are no holds bar not happening for you because they make you uncomfortable. They make you feel exposed. Those are things that I already know those areas. So. For I, me, those are big ticket items that have yet to be explored. That's fine, but just know, don't be looking to have millions of dollars in your checking account or savings account until we cross those lines. And until then, you're just going out to check your account balance. Um, 
<laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. In an age in which external culture norms no longer sustain and enforce the continuation of long-term partnerships, the generating internal motivation that which comes from within the relationship itself is essential to its long-term growth and visibility viability moon is messing with your microphone stop it moon <laughs> i can the hear cat. it go do, 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 do. Yeah, i can hear it too the incentive to support that motivation comes from the ability of both partners to continue to co-create compelling experiences on an ongoing basis while security safety closeness and comfort are certainly qualities that the care that characterize all fulfilling relationships without a balance of excitement passion adventure risk and yes even a certain degree of separate separateness security becomes boredom dependability becomes indifference intimacy becomes claustrophobia and comfort becomes stagnation the french view this paradox not as a problem but as something to celebrate rather than say oh merde look it up if you aren't sure what that means <laughs> when this when this apparent contradiction shows up in a relationship they say viva la difference <laughs> i fully agree with that from top to bottom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you can't expect to spend 50 60 years with someone and just have the same old shit every day. Yeah. If you do not go through Boy. changes, phases, seasons, right. dude, miss me with that. Yeah, because sometimes even like you might have had a hard time with someone, mm -hmm. and you went through the storm with someone. Now that becomes that thing that you talk about and connect with. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. remember that time, and you know you don't have that if you're all just like. Yeah, this, that, this, that, this, that. So what y'all do 20 years? The same damn thing. There are people who literally it's like, sabotage their relationships. So you good with that? <laughs> just to feel something other than the mundane. Mm -hmm. You know, there yep. are times that people will do crazy things like cheat. And yep. then and on the back yep. end, they're, they feel very remorseful because they don't want to lose the relationship. Yeah. But at the same time, they needed something. Yeah, just to, for a, to a little throw a spontaneity. Rift. They needed they, a rift they in jump, the relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then they they try to keep this over here safe. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Yeah. You know what I mean? People, like when, yeah, when someone wants to leave, they leave. People shouldn't create that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, if you don't take stock of your relationship and to make sure it has not... What, is it, what do they call it on the Cosby show? The marriage graveyard? Mm-hmm. That's a real place. <laughs> oh, and people episode. live people live in those places for like five, ten years sometimes. Mm -hmm. And either they, you know, work to come out of it or it crashes and burns and they that's that that's what they call growing apart. Right. Right. That's re just really what it is. So it's la difference that makes relationships edgy, dynamic, and exciting. As mm -hmm. most of us know, differences can and do show us a lot of ways opposites or perhaps more accurately compliments do attract introverts and extroverts, morning people and night people, impulsives and planners, steady plotters and <laughs> adrenaline junkies, yeah. adventure grabbers and security se seekers. There's no denying the idea that something in us is drawn to people who counter some of our dominant inclinations with complementary tendencies. Right. And while this can create some interesting challenges for most couples, these differences are actually the source of what is considered by many to be the source of the most important aspects of any successful relationship. Mm -hmm. Chemistry. Mm -hmm. Chemistry refers to that undeniable quality that is the basis of attraction. And honestly, without differences, there will be no chemistry right so that's kind of really the point so when you think about op do opposites attract yes right well this is this is what i would say to that it's like it's like finding those that those things that are different that you fall in love with about the other person mm -hmm. like for example with with you 
how you write is like mind blowing. You know what I mean? And that is a difference for me because that's not that's not what I do, and I have no desire mm-hmm. to to do do that and be like that. But that's just something you have that I'm highly attracted to. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think that it's it's things like that. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. that's just that, like you said, it's that that twenty percent. That's not the same. Mm-hmm. Those little things are like, wow, she does this because she dope, and I like that. Right. And you know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. that's cool. For sure. So. So but, in the end, yeah. oh. yes, opposites attract because you gotta have a positive and a negative. Right. And a neutral. Very true. There Very you go. true. So. Let's go ahead and enjoy a quick music break and we'll be back after these messages. <laughs>
we are back from the break and that was one of my favorite songs can't help it by the one and only vapors <laughs> available <laughs> everywhere where you can stream i just want to quote that chorus real quick i may be peculiar <laughs> to you ha, ha, ha. but i can't help it can't help it and i those are words i live by so, like I said, mm-hmm. available everywhere. <laughs> so, it is now time for the book of the month. Book, book, book of the month. Book, 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 yeah, we're not going to do month. that. Donkey Kong mix. <laughs> so, uh, this book, once again, was The 80 Marriage, A New Model for a Happier, Stronger Relationship by Nate and Kelly Klimp. This week's assignment is the second part of part uh, the second part of part three. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Building a new structure. That is chapter 10 and 11. Thank you so much, Maestro Kemp. Yeah. It, it, it. So, like he just said, chapters 10 and 11 were the reading assignment for this week. Chapter 10 is called Priorities. What is your yes? Okay. Okay. So. One thing we will start here it says you only get one cup in life. You don't get separate cups for energy. Second, yeah, you don't get separate cups of energy. Mm-hmm. One for your marriage, one for your kids, one for your work. It's just one big cup and everyone sips out of it every single day. Having one cup isn't new. Husbands and wives in the 1950s also had only one cup in life. The difference is that they didn't have so many things draining it. They didn't have, they didn't have the always on 24 seven work day. They didn't have any breaking news updates on 24 hour cable news networks. They didn't receive continual streams of texts, notifications, and emails from their friends, family members, and random people trying to sell them stuff that they didn't need. They definitely didn't feel that irresistible urge to pull out their phone at all hours of the day also they could surf instagram and see how much more fun their friends were having in life and i put on the side our power source is being continuously drained that's why it's, it always it's funny you think about people 50 years ago and they make it seem like you know it wasn't even like a struggle to be a part of daily life mm-hmm. like they make it seem like we're like weird that you know people have a hard time like working 40 hours a week keeping your house spotless making healthy meals make sure your kids are good exercise and staying in shape like it's just a million things mm-hmm. but they make it seem like oh the, we just took it you know it's like it's funny they make it seem like what though? like life then you didn't hear what i said you weren't listening no i was you listening were, you were playing with moon no i wasn't i, I you. no i wasn't yep. i was trying to make sure she wasn't eating something crazy but no i was listening to what you're saying i just want to know what you thought because you said it makes it seem like and you kept saying it makes it seem like make it seem like but you never finished no i said it makes it they make it seem like life was so so easy back then right and that we struggle right. for these simple things mm-hmm. and they had mm-hmm. no struggles but Mm -hmm. this just this right here was talking about the fact that our power sources are being drained by a probably a million more things oh yeah than they were back then yeah highly so it's like it's a totally different ball game it was a simple life yes you know and it was like yeah we did this and we had a lot of hard labor but that hard labor once that hard labor was over it was actually over yeah, like Where when hard labor is over here, so-called hard labor, mm-hmm. when it's over here, you're mentally drained by 10,000 other things that's going on right. or that need to be done or things that you should think about or because something else is about to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's so many things to worry. So worrying feels more hard on your mind than actually chopping a tree down. Yeah. It's hard, yeah, and it's physically hard, but mentally, that's why mental illness is extremely higher Uh now, because there's so many things to have to think about and worry about what I need to do, uh, who I need to talk to, how do I get more followers, how do I get my, (laughs) 
my show for, to record and how, you know it's yeah. things that we create ourselves in a lot of ways but also too it's things that the world make you feel like if you don't create that you're crazy yes so you know shoot yeah say it no <laughs> stop it I just, I no i'm just you know <laughs> I'm, you know because it, it bugs me sometimes you know what i mean how yeah. people make it seem like it should just be you know so yeah it's funny they call it the you can have it all culture it mm -hmm. used to be good mm -hmm. enough to do one thing well mm -hmm. husbands didn't beat themselves up for not being fully present at home mm -hmm. wives didn't get mom shamed for missing a little league game to attend a work meeting because mm -hmm. there were no work meetings to attend priorities <laughs> back right. then were right. simple right is it it's like walking on a balance beam while trying to juggle eggs a crystal glass a knife and any number of other fragile hazardous items put simply it's impossible paul did you get the the chickens from uh from right. mr why, why mr. you use paul because paul paul did it paul he, did paul, it paul did you say paul yeah paul was there an L at the end of that? No, there's no L. It's okay. just Paul. I thought you said Paul. No, Pa. Oh, okay. Moving right along. <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. Yes. Paul. Proceed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just how, you know, it was like, went to go do this, went to go do that, brought the, the supplies back, and then the mom hooked it up, made a good meal, and then they, they talked. Yes. <laughs> they actually had a conversation. She spent her day knitting. And was interested kids. in what they said and what yes. was going on. <laughs> it says, if we prioritize everything, then we end up effectively prioritizing nothing. To right. succeed across all subjects, just think about everything you would have to be a master at. The right. required course is being a badass at work, being an amazing lover 101. The survey course is mastering the modern art of hyper parenting, the senior seminar in working out daily, the 200 level <laughs> class in caring for your aging parents and so on. Yet the Man. bigger problem in life is getting an A in just one or two of those courses effectively destroys your ability to get an A in many others. Yep. So basically yep. you can't get all A's in life and without clear priorities, we're lo we're unlikely to get an A in any of them at all. Right. Yeah. That's 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 it. Yeah. It says, of course, you might up. be thinking to yourself, "I'm too busy to sit around sorting out my priorities." But without clear priorities, you're letting your perpetual friends, colleagues at work, extended family members, and requests from random people you have never even met rule your life. It says, right. as Greg McCowan, author of Essentialism, declares, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. With, right. clear, with clear priorities, on the other hand, you are putting yourself in control and you're giving yourself the courage and clarity to fail some of life's classes that don't matter and get A's in one or two that matter the most to you. Yeah. Yeah. So... <clears throat> setting your priorities is huge but they mean nothing unless you do what chapter 11 says and chapter 11 is effectually called boundaries what's your no mm -hmm. so <laughs> boundaries it's so funny because like, I had very little to in the priorities one but I think I've highlighted the entire um chapter of this one mm -hmm. <laughs> so it says the problem with never saying no if you look carefully at these asks from others you start to see that they come from three primary forms okay mm -hmm. the first one is invitation so here's an example are you too interested in coming to coming by for dinner on saturday it sounds like an earnest request for your time that seems like it's in everyone's best interest. Sometimes these invitations match your priorities. You meet them with an effortless yes that rolls right off your tongue, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes a dinner at the friend's house on Saturday interferes with date night that week. 
In these moments, saying yes and failing to set clear boundaries can come at a high cost to your priorities. I don't have that problem. Yes, I know you don't. <laughs> Listen, can you come out to dinner? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> sure can't. I hope it's good, though. All right, have a good one. <laughs> Look, life is great. That's how it should be. Yeah. I'm just, I just have to really point that out. Like, I don't have to feel worried about anything. Because honestly, like, if I don't put myself in a position where I need to be, my wife is going to have some problems with me. And I ain't got time for that. Oh my goodness. They should understand that. So, so, so you just put it all on me? Oh, yeah, of course. Gotcha. <laughs> Number two, the request. Here's an example. I know you're busy, but could you spare 30 minutes to meet me for coffee next week? <laughs> it's an ask for your time that may not be in your best interest, but will be helpful to another person. Here again, sometimes it makes sense to say yes. Sometimes these requests are easy to fulfill. They can also be a way to help and contribute to the lives of others. And yet, say yes to too many of these requests. And soon there's no time left for what matters most to you and your partner. Right. Well, my I, solution to that. I knew you went to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> is why you want to meet for coffee. Text me. <laughs> what you got to talk about you ain't got to see me duo <laughs> hang out skype you know what i mean zoom <laughs> you know thank goodness for those yeah. but at the end of the day what i'm saying is sometimes people just make it an effort to waste time mm -hmm. i just i feel that way i understand i feel that way you know what i mean because it's like i want to be prepared for when I am needed for time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to constraint my time because the fellas want to drink and do absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I understand. What if they just want to hang out, talk and play Parcheesi? Come over here. If you ain't got nothing to do and your boundaries is loose, <laughs> come over here. Oh my God. You know, I ain't going nowhere. I'm not. I am not. I just want to point out that I am not the kind of person that would really care if you want to go somewhere. I don't, don't want to. Don't put it on me because I don't I'm really care. I'm letting you and the world know I don't want to. We so, know. So don't ask. Number three, <laughs> the demand. And here's an example. You two haven't visited us for Christmas in three years. We need you here next year. It's the most forceful call for your time and energy. There may be times when you make sense when it makes sense to say yes to these sort of demands for your time. But here again, the habit never the habit of never pushing back, failing to set clear boundaries or hesitating to offer a clear no can make it impossible to live out the priorities you outlined in the previous chapter. That's because you put craisins in the potato salad. That's why we ain't showed up and we ain't coming back. <laughs> When you say no, <laughs> <laughs> the whole world, <laughs> give me a moment. <laughs> so when you say no, in contrast, the whole world turns upside down. You might feel the guilt of letting down your friend, your coworker or family member, the people receiving your no this is was very important i thought it was interesting so mm -hmm. the people receiving your no mirror back this discomfort okay. so so you're saying no you not you because i know you don't care well, but for the rest of us when we say no we feel uh -huh. this discomfort the people receiving our no as you pour your water in the microphone yeah it sounds good don't it the people receiving your no mirror back this discomfort. They get upset and they give you funny looks and they may even gossip about you behind your back. Mm. But why shouldn't they? You have just told them that your plan for your own life is more important than their plan for your life. Absolutely. How dare you? Absolutely. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was waiting <laughs> to say something. Listen, go ahead. Talk all you want. Okay, because oh whatever you're saying is probably true. He don't never want to come to the show. Don't <laughs> I don't? <laughs> I don't know why he wanna. Nope. I just want everyone to know when we're not there, it's cause of him. All right. <laughs> no, it's cause of her. Really, it's really not. No, it is because 
I do like to I'm go. I'm sorry. Look, all look. of that riffraff. You no, just no, put no. The let me tell you. Let me tell and you. Now, all of a sudden, you want to be a social butterfly? I am a social what? butterfly, but let you me tell. So loud. In okay, the but let, let me tell Stop you though, yelling because because I need to explain this. Mm-hmm. Like when it's something that we will do together. I'm all I'm all one to go. Mm-hmm. You don't. You got to be honest. I don't know. You, you got to give me a real example. Because when's the last I'm time saying, we I'm tried saying, to go anywhere? Exactly. But but I'm what I'm saying is if somebody was like, yeah, y'all should come and do something, 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 something. And oh, well, if she's coming with me, yeah, let's go. That's my point. Mm-hmm. If they just want me to come by myself, I don't think I'm needed or that important to be wanted anywhere. I'll say this. I think what it is, unfortunately, is we technically are an island. 90%. Mm-hmm. And I will say 97% <laughs> of what people invite us to do, we don't actually give a shit about doing. When we come, uh-huh. it's either because we have said, oh, we need to be more outgoing, or that, or these, this is my she, internal she said, conversation. Yeah, that's what she said, yeah. Or, well, I want to be nice. But most people aren't interested in the things that actually we deem to be enjoyable. Things that we are so, interested like, in. So, yes. like, we yes. go to things that we yeah. technically don't, would never give a damn about and 90% of the time the day of we are kicking and screaming that we have to do it but we just go on we get on for the get on and we move on because that's the it's a part of life yeah that's yeah that's it that's, that's it. it to the sum end. it all no up. one ever calls and say hey you want to go see a Marvel movie no one nope. ever calls and says you want to do something fun, you know something fun like that we have a, a deep meditation uh, high elevation co- uh, conference yeah, we don't Let's get go those to that. calls. We don't get those calls. Call Not us. Not yet, but maybe one day right. we'll meet those people. Right. So this is really cool. And I'm about to read a lot right here mm-hmm. really quick because it's important. <laughs> okay. So this part of this chapter on boundaries was called the most difficult no. Mm. So we call this one thirds. Thirds can be parents. Children and relatives. Okay. A third is any outside party or activity that attempts to exert influence on your system of shared success. Thirds usually don't see themselves as intruding. Mm -hmm. They are generally close to one partner, but not the other. (laughs) So from the perspective of the third, the invitation to come to the family brunch or the idea of planning a trip together isn't an intrusion it's just an attempt to connect and make plans with someone they care about Mm -hmm. why should you be on the lookout for the influence of the thirds first your closest thirds have the potential to disrupt the delicate balance of the power between you and your partner Mm -hmm. for instance let's say you and your partner spend months finding the right school for your child then just before you sign the paperwork your mother-in-law An intimate third in your system tries to talk your partner out of the decision, saying it would be better for your child to attend the school just a few blocks from her house. This is a perfect setup for an epic fight. Why? Because a third has just intruded into your system of shared success. Wow. It's like a game of basketball in which your two-person team is driving the ball to the basket and suddenly a fan, in this case your mother-in-law, jumps the railing and runs out onto the court (laughs) sending the whole game in chaos (laughs) if your boundaries are weak thirds will roll all over them roll (laughs) parents kids friends and coworkers all have their own priorities they want you to spend more of your scarce vacation time visiting them they want you to cancel a date night to attend their dinner party. They want you to take your time away from your partner on your couple's vacation to call into their important work meetings. This isn't because they aren't acting. This isn't because they're acting with ill will or intentionally trying to disrupt your life. They simply have a vested interest in arranging circumstances so you can spend more time with them. <laughs> intrusion (laughs) (laughs) and it got nothing to do with time it's all control 
Yes. So the best way to set your boundaries, it's funny, it's set up in two different ways. Mm -hmm. So the first way in the art of saying no mm -hmm. is to prioritize your nose, mm -hmm. delay the de de delay tactic and the counter offer. So the prioritizing your no is basically saying no, then briefly explaining why this doesn't fit into your priorities. Okay. Yeah. The delay tactic is buying you I'll and your you partner know. time. <laughs> yes. I'll let you know. We'll check our calendar and get back mm -hmm. with you. I'll let you know five minutes before. But then the counter offer <laughs> <laughs> is responding with an alternative fit. Like we How can't about, attend that event yeah. uh, tonight at your house, but we'd love to go for a walk with you on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> I should say no. <laughs> <laughs> However, with thirds, it's a whole different tactic because it's more Let's complex. Hear this. Step one: always by time. It says <laughs> so. It's like don't ever say yes. Just always by time. So I always be like, let me talk about it with Rufus, and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Yeah, Rufus. <laughs> it's Rufus me. It's Rufus, yes. I'm Rufus. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Step two, have a shared success conversation. By buying time, you and your partner now have the space to have a conversation about the following question. What's best for whatever your team name is? So our, t our team name is DJ. What? DJ? <laughs> <laughs> What's best for DJ? What's best for Dallin? No, <laughs> not happening. Alanique. <laughs> yeah, you always say that. Oh, that's so that's gross. So weird. Anyways, and step three is stick together. When I'm you old. finally do say no, stop it. <laughs> Set the boundary and stay on your team. Uh -huh. Okay. So, whatever. And lastly, the freedom of living on the other side of no. What we need is more structured approach to protecting our shared values, along with clear boundaries and commitments. We recommend an approach that begins with thinking of marriage like a boat. Just as you can sink a boat by overloading it with cargo, mm -hmm. you can sink even the best marriage by getting caught in the habits of living without boundaries, of saying yes when you really mean no. <laughs> Mm. To protect things that matter most in your relationship, you will now have the opportunity to reflect carefully on what you want and keep your marriage boat and what needs to be thrown off the deck into the sea. Mm -hmm. And I do have a name for us. No. I do. Okay. It's a good name. What is it? I'm going to come up with names. Okay. Dommage. That's a good name. <sighs> And just like that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. All righty. It's time for pick a card, any card. Boo, doo, doo. Boo, doo, boo. Boo, boo, boo. She just disregarded my name. I really did. Because that's over. Dumas. So pick a card, any card. Let's recap on those categories from the best self intimacy deck about you, intimacy, relationships, past, life, and random. Which one you want this week, Mr. Kemp? I feel like I pick it every time. I picked it last time, boo. It don't feel like you've ever picked it. I we both answer the question. No, you might week. you know you might do it, but it's just you want? it just feels like I do it all the time. Which one you want? About you. About you. Let me find it. I don't feel like I've ever said that one. That's what I like about you. <clears throat> Dommage. About you, there we go. That's not going to work out. That's a good name. I had to write that down. Oh, I hope not. So. Pick a card. Any card. Oh, I'm picking a card? Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to read it to you and you answer. We both answered. Pick a card. Oh. Please, please don't do that. All right. What kind of present do you like the best? What? <laughs> what kind of present do you like the best? The type that can't be bought in a store. The type that can't be bought in the store? Mm -hmm. I like presents that require emotional and... <clears throat> 
but what I talked about earlier, when I feel like you really had to put yourself in a position to be extremely uncomfortable and put yourself in a position to grow, those are the presents that mean the most to me. Your turn. Quality time. <sighs> Spending quality time. Uninterrupted or, you know, stuff like that. Well, doesn't that just sound great? Mo, give me this. No. What is that? She's been playing with this. It's a thumbtack. I know. <laughs> I'm going to try to get it from her. Well. Let's move right. All right. It is that time. Once again, for the drawing. I don't, that might be it. That might be it. It's time for the drawing. Next week's topic. And she's rolling the ball now. <laughs> the one that <laughs> fell was it. No. You do it every time. It's all... Oh, don't try to recreate it. It's not the oh. same. That's not fate. That's not the cosmos. That is you trying to drop the paper. I don't like this one. You're right. That wasn't fate. I told you. Why is it in there? If you don't know why <laughs> and how are you to, to pick it? It there probably was one of mine. It probably was. No, it, no, it was it mine. It was mine. Oh. Okay. So, drum roll, please. We already did drum roll. And next week's topic is called, what are we not willing to do for each other? Oh, not willing to do. Drop the mic on that. That sounds like something from a book. I know. You made a song. Excuse me, Moon. You said Thank I made you. a song? Mm -hmm. So, just real quick, any final thoughts on today's podcast or anything that you'd like to put out there into the cosmos? Everyone and people out there, set your boundaries. Set your boundaries. And do not care what the other one will think. Uh, what exactly is the difference between <laughs> everyone and people out there? What? You said everyone and people out there. So I just kind of wanted to know why. No, I said people out there, set your boundaries. No, you said everyone and people out there. Oh, because be right. they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> the everyone is them the others are those <laughs> just i just wanted the clarity and you've given it ow they get it moon stop slapping my foot on that note it is that time <laughs> it is we have reached the end of this week's podcast it was quite goofy today but it is 10 40 p.m so goof is how you get through it Anyways, all of the articles used to drive today's discussion forward can be found how in the description box, as well as links to the <laughs> book of the month, the 8080 marriage. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and of course, ignite, ignite your, your energy. energy.